as you probably know, because everybody is basically talking about this, it's on every piece of news. And by the way, John, thank you. John says, happy Friday. I hope you hit your goal today. And he puts $50 on that. So uh, really, really appreciate that, John, it, uh, of course. Uh, so as you probably know, because everybody's talking about it, uh, Donald Trump was convicted uh, uh, 34 counts um, uh, of fel felony, ch felony charges. Uh, he was convicted on every single one of them, found guilty. Uh, he, is, uh, he is going to be sentenced uh, on July 11th in, uh, in the New York uh, court. Uh, every one of these uh, 34 counts carries a uh, sentence, a, a potential sentence of several thousand dollars up to uh, five years in jail. Theoretically, this wouldn't happen, but theoretically, uh, he could serve them uh, one after the other. So you do 35 times uh, 34 times five, you would spend the rest of your life in jail. That's not happening. Um, uh, it, but uh, it more likely, uh, if, if there was a jail sentence, it would be concurrent. And I doubt there's going to be a jail sentence. Uh, it, there's a lot of, the judge has a lot of options in terms of sentencing. It's really at the discretion of the judge. Uh, that's why it's generally in a criminal case, not a particularly good idea, I guess, unless you're running for president, uh, to, uh, you know, say nasty things about the judge because he does hold uh, at least an element of your future in his hands. Um, and uh, so, you know, that, that will be, uh, so uh, in this case, the judge <laughs> is probably not particularly happy with Donald Trump and, and ready to go after him. Uh, let's see, what else do we know about the sentencing? Um, the, the case can be appealed, uh, probably almost certainly will be appealed. It needs to be appealed within 30 days. Uh, so uh, you've got a month to appeal it. So the appeal has to happen before the sentencing. The sentencing is July 11th. Uh, you know, the, the judge at the sentencing could uh, basically delay the enforcement of the sentence until after the appeal is heard or not. It's, it's again, at the distract, at the, at the uh, it's up to uh, the judge. And, you know, generally, you guys are not Donald Trump, so just, you know, legal advice. I'm not a lawyer, so don't take my legal advice seriously. Um, don't piss off the judge. <laughs> Too much of your fate rests with him, even if you think convinced that you're innocent. Um, nothing is to be gained, uh, and again, unless you're actually running for president. Um, uh, nothing is to be gained from uh, pissing him, uh, pissing him off. Uh, so um, uh, I think that's where we stand, right? I mean, uh, this will be clarified in the next few weeks, uh, really by July 11th, and then there's an appeal, uh, and and what happens beyond that. Now, what about evaluating this this uh, this um, uh, decision by the jury? A jury of your peers, and I know it's easy to dismiss them, and somebody said, well, they're not real Americans because they're from New York, and that doesn't count as a real American, so they're not really a, a jury of my peers. But of course, you know, Donald Trump is not exactly your peer either. Uh, he is from New York. He is very much from New York. He is <laughs> very much a New York character. So uh, I guess it was a jury of his peers, even even if it's not, uh, even if it's not your peers. Um, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, so, uh, you know, beyond that, um, so, so yes, what about, what about, uh, how do you evaluate uh, this whole case? Well, let's, there are two real issues here. Uh, one is the issues of facts. Uh, is, are the facts that the prosecution claims happened, did they really happen? Uh, and then the second question is, even if they did happen, was there a violation of the law that would justify a felony charge? In particular, given that the underlying accusation relates to what typically would be a misdemeanor, and, uh, you know, we've already passed the, uh, the, what do you call it, the two years where you can, uh, where you can actually file charges for a crime, for a, uh, this kind of misdemeanor, which is falsifying business records. Um, so uh, on the issues of fact, 
on the issues of fact. Did Donald Trump pay a porn star and a Playboy model to silence them before an election so the story wouldn't break? Yeah, I mean, of course he did. Has anybody doubted that? Has anybody ever doubted it? Is this ever been in doubt? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty much yes, of course he did. Did he then falsify business records so that in the business record it didn't say paid off porn star, it actually said, I don't know, some legal thing, right? Well, of course he falsified business records. I mean, who wouldn't, right? If you're paying off the porn star, you're not going to actually admit to paying off the porn star. The whole point of paying off the porn star is not for the story not to break. So you're not going to put it in writing that you paid off the porn star. So uh, did he falsify the records? Yes, of course he did. Again, I think the probability of that happening is 99%. And that's based both on, both on the testimony in the, in, the, in the court and on Donald Trump's character and who he is, what he is, what he represents, how he lives his life. I think all of that is true. So on the facts of the case, there's just no question uh, that all those facts line up with the prosecution. But here's where it gets into trouble as a, as a legal case. What's the crime? So he falsified business records, that's a misdemeanor. But that's a misdemeanor that, again, uh, the, the, what do you call it, statute of limitations is already covered. It's more than two years over. And it's a slap on the wrist and it's done. I mean, no, nobody, nobody, you know, it's not a felony charge like, like what he's been accused of. So what is, uh, what is the crime? And the crime, uh, and, and so the, the prosecution has alleged a number of different potential crimes, uh, or including crimes that have to do with, uh, with uh, election law, crimes that have to do with influence in election and, you know, and, and, and did... Trump do this all in order to suppress information from the American public in order to get election elected? Yes, of course he did. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have. Not, he doesn't care if people know he slept with a porn star. The only reason he cares is because he was worried that it might prevent him from uh, winning the election. And we've actually got it, his uh, personal assistant saying that in, in, on the record. That, that he was concerned about that and he was happy that they managed to get them to silence them, all right? But is that a crime, right? Um, and, and maybe it is at the federal level, but is that a crime at the state of New York level? Maybe, but it's very, very uh, reaching and extending the line. I've seen a lot of what I think pretty objective writers about this um, say, look, th th yeah, maybe, but nobody, nobody, nobody prosecutes this stuff. This isn't stuff that goes to court as, as felony charges. This just doesn't make any sense and never did make any sense. Indeed, when this first came to trial, this was clearly, and everybody admitted it, including people who didn't like or don't like Trump, like me, that this is pretty weak and lame. And, and this is, of course, Briggs, 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 right? This is a guy who won't prosecute muggers. <laughs> so he's going to come into this convoluted thing about Donald Trump to prosecute him when he won't prosecute. You know, he, he came into office saying he wasn't going to prosecute armed robbery. Remember, we did a show, uh, we did a show covering um, a brig when he came into office saying that, uh, you know, he wasn't, you know, unless it was, unless there was actual violence, even the threat of violence didn't count. I mean, this is, this is uh, the worst. This guy, Brig, is, is the worst of the progressive, uh, of the progressive uh, judges. I noticed that as I'm talking uh, bad about Brig, all, all, all the uh, pro-Trump trolls have kind of, or, or you know, I have, troll is a nice word as compared to what I would say, uh, I've disappeared. <laughs> Whoops. He's saying, I agree with him. What, what, what happened? Something must be wrong here. Maybe we've convinced him finally that Trump is the second coming. Anyway, Briggs is a bad guy, and clearly this is motivated by politics, but more than politics, I'd say. This was motivated by Briggs trying to make a name for himself. This is the Rudolf Giuliani method, the Rudolf Giuliani method of, um, of prosecution. That is, you don't prosecute people based on uh, the nature of the crime, based on the severity of the crime, based on whether they even committed a crime. 
The war of Giuliani method is you prosecute people based on what will get you the biggest headlines, what will get your name into the paper, what, a, what will get you uh, your picture in the paper, even better, what will get you on talk TV and everything else, so that maybe one day you can run for governor or something like that. Uh, Omer in the rule of Giuliani case. And, and of course, it worked really, really well for Giuliani up to a point. But that was his method during the 1980s, and a lot of people have tried, and Biggs clearly here is copying him, and it, this is not new. So uh, uh, this, this whole prosecution was geared towards doing what they could to cripple uh, uh, Trump and, of course, to, uh, to enhance the reputation, the visibility, the name recognition of a, a really, really bad guy, which is the district attorney, um, uh, Brig, who is uh, the worst of the kind of the uh, on the on the far edge of really, really bad, uh, bad uh, progressive uh, attorney generals um, who are slowly being elected out of office around the country. And he's still around and he would like to be around for a long time. And he'll probably run when he runs next time on this conviction of Donald Trump and what a hero to the progressive cause he is. So while there's no question Donald Trump is a scumbag, um, there's no question that Donald Trump, uh, you know, uh, uh, did what they claim he did. There's no question he falsified business records. Um, the, 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 the issue here is, uh, first of all, there's nothing new here. We know, uh, we knew he was a scumbag. We knew how he treated women from, uh, you know, the recording that came out uh, when he was running for first time in 2016. So there's nothing new here. It's brag, not break. Sorry, brag. Thank you, Ian for correcting me, Bragg. What's his first name? I forget his first name, but Bragg. Um, so we know uh, Trump's character already. Uh, we know uh, how, what a horrible person he is. Uh, if you didn't kn know that, you've been, I don't know, unconscious for the last uh, uh, 20 years. Uh, we know what an ignoramus, you know, moron he is. And, you know, this trial taught us nothing new about that. Uh, you know, that, that was already all evidence. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it is sad, but not new and not surprising that uh, somebody like Alvin Bragg, thank you, uh, God, glad to serve you. <laughs> I like that. Glad to serve you. And he serves me up the name. <laughs> that worked nicely. Alvin Bragg, um, it's not surprising and somebody like Alvin Bragg would use the court system for both political means, but also to enhance his own name recognition and his own reputation. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Trump actually, I think, uh, is guilty of, uh, of what uh, he's being accused of in federal court of uh, hiding the documents, uh, the, secret, the, the, the top secret documents, um, and, and potentially over the January 6th, but certainly over the document case. That is an a easy case, I think, uh, to, to show, and that, that's the kind of case given that he hid it from the FBI and hid it for the government, that is the kind of case that he should really be prosecuted for and really be found guilty uh, of, uh, likely. But that case will never make it to court because uh, it has a unbelievably, uh, you know, here the judge was uh, friendly to the prosecution. The judge in the document case is unbelievably friendly to Trump. I mean, she goes out of her way constantly over and over again to rule in favor of Trump, and, and she has been so successful at doing that, so successful at doing that, that um, that, that trial has been delayed and delayed and delayed, and, and it won't happen because he'll, he'll pardon himself once he gets elected, or if he doesn't get elected, maybe then they'll prosecute him, but at that point, kind of who cares? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, the, real, the real case is the document case, the real case is the January 6th case, because they clearly violated the law on, on real issues, on serious issues, on things that no president should be allowed to get away with. This one, <laughs> I mean, all it did was, it, it was entertaining, uh, and another, another angle on uh, the rotten character that Donald Trump has, and on how uh, committed his fans are. This is just more proof that when Donald Trump said that he would, uh, that he could kill somebody, shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue, he would still get elected. Uh, the, the, his fans would still vote for him. I think that's, uh, I think that's absolutely right. Uh, you know, he could, he could exhibit the character 
flaws and people who call themselves the most worst character flaws possible. And uh, people who call themselves objectivists would still not vote, just vote for him because maybe there's no choice because there are only two candidates, but embrace him and lobby for him and argue for him and support him and really love him and, 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 and embrace him. So, uh, uh, so there you go. Rule of law, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 is, it is sad that this is being used, but uh, this, as I said, this is not unusual. Uh, you know, when, when people get excited by what Giuliani did in the 1980s, when people are willing to condemn Giuliani, which, which by the way, what Giuliani did in the 1980s, far worse than what's being done to Donald Trump right now. And done, and what Giuliani did in the 1980s was done to good people, to good people, productive people, valuable human beings. Um, it, it, the, you know, this is so much, you know, minor as compared to that. You want the rule of law then I want to see you stand up for the rule of law when it's inconvenient for you. I want to see you stand up for the rule of law, not when it, it, it just is an issue of uh, the person you happen to worship. But I want to see you stand up for the rule of law when it's somebody, when, it, when it's much broader than that, when it's actually an issue of the rule of law, when it's actually taking innocent people, when it's actually accusing innocent people of crimes and sending them to jail and destroying their reputation. There's no reputation for Trump to be destroyed and destroying their income and destroying their livelihood. Then I want you to see, see you standing up for those people. I don't see that. I see people, I see people rally around Trump mindlessly. That's what I see. And that's what I'm here to call out. And yes, this is an abuse of the rule of law. Add it to the long list of abuses of the rule of law by prosecutors, both on the left and on the right. This case, if you will, was prosecuted, uh, you know, was, uh, was, was, was shopped to a particular prosecutor, right? How, how, ma how, many, I mean, how many times does the right shop its cases to get judges that are favorable to it? I mean, sadly, this is a state of American law. American law has become politicized. The rule of law has become the rule of men. And yes, both sides, because the both sides guilty. And until we start making it clear, making it clear that the fundamental problems in this country are not the problems of the left, not the problems of the right, but fundamental problems within this culture, within this political culture, but within this intellectual culture and within the, within the culture of advocacy, until we actually think about the ideas driving the corruption of this culture and stop being mindlessly tribal, then this culture will only get worse. Until we stop politicizing everything, this will only get worse. But this is what we're seeing, and what we're seeing in the response to this verdict is pure tribalism, and we're seeing it here in the chat. The people who love Trump, he can do no wrong. No court could ever convict Trump and his fans would say, oh, yes, no, he's the bad guy. He should be convicted. That would never happen because that's against the tribal rules. And if you despise Trump, as the left does, the conviction is, of course, justified. It's not political. There was a real crime here. He should rot in jail for 50 years for this. And it's pure, unadulterated tribalism. Nothing more than that. And so, that, so when, you, when anybody out there, and I see this, anybody out there tries to actually make a case one way or the other to what's going on, <laughs> whoosh, right over people's head, because they're not interested in what actually goes on. They're interested in whether this reinforces what my tribe is supposed to think or doesn't, or it reinforces uh, the, the, it's all tribalism, all tribalism. And uh, that is the problem in American society. The problem in American society is not uh, just there is a problem with our legal system, but the much deeper problem and the reason our legal system is the way it is is because of the unthinking tribalism that is now dominating American culture and American mentality and American approach to dealing with these kind of questions and these kind of issues.